Hello, uh, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, the first impressions video of this, which is, as you can see, the Airfix 1 to 76 RAF Battle Britain Airfield set, um, which comes with the paints and glue and such as well. Not that I'll probably use those, but I'll, I'll get to that. So, this set uh, costs £21.99, although if you shop around, you can certainly get it cheaper. Uh, it's not massively heavy, so postage shouldn't be too bad. Oh, I picked this up from a department store near us. I think I paid 20, so 20 is probably a good guideline. So let's have a look, see what we get. I know this is actually quite an old kit or several old kits, but uh, I thought it was quite an interesting set to buy. I generally try and avoid buying older Airfix kits. Um, for obvious reasons, some of them the quality was pretty horrific and they let their moulds go into uh, a state of ill repair to say the least. And I've had a few kits I've just been able to do nothing with and I've ended up throwing away. But all credit to them, since uh, Hornby bought them, they've been doing a lot more uh, new moulds and some of them are really quite spectacular, especially for their price because they're still the, the lower end of the market price wise. Personally, I wish they would have always put on the packets on the box um, whether or not it's one of the original moulds or a new one. Uh, easy way around this, I think, is to have a classic range. Just any kits that, that are old that they want to keep doing, put in a classic range, and the rest in a standard range, which will obviously over time replace it. So, anyway, I'm waffling. Let's see what we get. Well, Firstly, here's the airfield itself. It doesn't make it massively clear that you actually get this on the box. It's sort, it's shown, but it's not actually listed as a thing you get. Um, you've got a little description on the back here where you're looking at that. We'll read this. It says, in the summer of... In, I should try again. The summer of 1940 was vital, not just for the survival of RAF and Great Britain, but also the free world. While hurricanes and spitfires of the RAF played an invaluable role, the hard work of a ground crews and their support vehicles cannot be underestimated. The Bedford QL and AEC Matador featured here kept the RAF's fighters supplied and ready to fight. Oh, oh in fact, I'm wrong. It does... Hmm, a large box, but unwieldy. It does actually list that you get the, uh, the airfield itself. So, that's fine. Wasn't sure. Well, the, the airfield is this strange very thin vacuum formed kind of thing and yeah it's it's not spectacular to say the least but I mean you could do something with it I'm not quite sure what that is let's see if it's on the picture uh, no they've hidden it behind a lorry obviously they don't know what it is either so <laughs> anyway hmm. I may have to put a little building or something over that because that just looks like a blob but I think with, a, with enough effort, mount that on a board and maybe use textured paint, something like um, some of the Citadel technical paints perhaps would add a little bit extra to this because I mean it really is bare, bare bones but you get it and that's fine. So onto the instructions here, we've got a uh, Supermarine Spitfire Mark 1A which I think is the old one. Let me just check. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, refueling set and RAF personnel. So these are all sets they sell uh, separately, although the Spitfire has now been updated and replaced, which is fine because it, it needed it. But let's see what the instructions are like. Oh, got a load of gump in here. What do you want the Airfix Club? I already have. And just a flyer. Oh, here's the transfers. We'll get to those in a little bit. So let's put those there. But um, our instructions, really can't fault them. It's extremely clear. Uh, painting guide there for the Spitfire. It's um, it's simple, but it tells you everything you need to know. And this, uh, looking at the fueling set, this is clearly the old instructions because they they've got that hand drawn look to them. But again, clear enough. You're not going to get confused doing that. That's uh, that's all good. Oh, and here's a painting guide. Let's see. 
the Bedford QL. There it is. And there it is. Now there's two ways to paint this. But as I said, I also do the refueling set as a separate thing. So I will probably buy that separately. Because I very much enjoy making small trucks and things. So there we go, a little example. That seems to be the same photo as the box, more or less. And some very shoddy pictures here. I wonder how old they were of the uh, the, the personnel. It's the painting guide there. <clears throat> I find it very strange that they put the numbers. So you've got to keep referring back either to the start where sometimes they're listed or look them up. Where it would make a lot more sense to put the numbers and put a key across the bottom. You'd think that would be easy, wouldn't you? But there we go. And a little warning about um, making sure that you wash and dry the figures before trying to paint them. That's because of the casting grease they use. So, yeah, it's all right. It's functional enough. So, let's see. Oh, let me stop the camera falling over. What else do we get? Well, here are the RAF personnel. You get, well, four sprues. Two have been sort of broken off this section here. And, I mean, they're basic. They're okay. I don't know how well this is going to show up on film. But they're all right, really. I mean, 172 figures. They're never amazing, but... Uh, pretty good you got a decent selection there at the uh, I don't know what the, what what his name would be the guy with the flags waving the plane in um, what's he doing Is that camera oh, yeah cameraman and lady I don't know what her job title would be uh, and frankly you've got way too many to use in a small diorama like this but that's that's fine you've also got this little little mini kit thing here I think the wheels yeah the wheels are on the other section little trolley presumably with tools and such and rather nicely you get three cyclists and some more blokies standing around so you get duplicates basically so you it would look a bit silly if you used more than one of each figure on one diorama but that's fine it's more for later and I mean I've, I've certainly seen worse I think they must have cleaned the molds up a little bit because I've recently seen much worse from their figures so yeah not bad at all you've got to have um figures with you i suppose for diorama there we get let's see two little tubes of glue quite a few paints actually let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve of these small humble acrylics um i use acrylic paint a lot but very very rarely humble only if i can't get any, the right colors i want in vallejo or army painter or tamia so they'll go in the box i might use them for something at some point but i'm more than likely replace them with uh, something a bit more high quality oh and two brushes which are uh, four and a zero so large and small so that's all fine and good so let's have a look at the Spitfire. Let's cut him out of his bag here. Snip, snip. And there's the little Spitfire. So let's have a look. Again, as I say, this is very clearly an old kit. If you compare this to their, their newer ones, it looks pretty shoddy. But they've done a good job of cleaning it up. There's, uh, there's no noticeable flash anywhere and it's a it's a functional spitfire I'll, I'll make it i'll probably use well i will use a much better one on the diorama if i choose to make it but it's it's fine it's okay it's good to see they've uh, cleaned up the molds of the older ones because i used to work in a model shop and it was um frankly embarrassing selling kits in the state that they got to I used to always try and persuade people to go with other brands if they wanted a cheap end, Revel, maybe Itelary. And if they had money to spare, then uh, Tamiya Dragon and the like there. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. For what it is, it's what I expected. I did hope they put the new one in, but uh, that's fine. I've got two of the new one uh, lying around anyway.
So yeah, that's it. That's the Spitfire. That's fine. Oh, and the clear bases are nice and clear. That's good. Because we're, again, with some of the older airfix kits, these are very cloudy and horrible. A little bit thick, perhaps, but you can live with that. Right, so onto the trucks. Let's cut them out of their bag. Right. Oh, I think we might have a few loose pieces rattling about, but that's uh, not surprising. Oh, and there's the uh, top from the tanker. Looks like you've got two quite distinct choices there. I think that's actually really good. The detail is uh, a little bit heavy-handed, perhaps, but it's it's crisp enough. But it seems a little exaggerated. But uh, then again, I don't. I'm not familiar with the vehicle, so maybe it really is like that. I don't know. But uh, it's certainly noticeable that uh, on these, because these were terrible, they got into a horrific state. But these are actually looking absolutely fine. I mean, except for the level of detail not being what we come to expect now. This could almost be a new kit. And they've... Mm, very strange way they've done this. I suppose this is how they mould it, but um, let's move it out of the way so we see a bit better. You've got this sort of central bar and then sprues coming off from it. Oh, and some more people. Are they the same people? No, I don't think they are. But again, we've got them in pairs, so I'm only going to be using one of each, if at all. And there's a nice pieces of a truck there. And the details are actually not that... Not that bad. It's certainly uh, workable. I know that you can get etching and resin parts for the, the Matador truck. And so maybe you can for the other two. I'm not sure. For the uh, What was the other one? The Bedford Q... QL, I think? Yeah, QL. So yeah, that's really not, not too bad. And finally... There we go. Here's the other one. Noticeably no flash again. I don't think anything's fallen off that. And a few more people. And yeah, I mean, they look like nice enough kits. To be honest, I've certainly seen worse. I've seen kits that are a lot newer, but aren't half as good. Thanks to the JB kits, which uh, you might have seen around, because now Airfix is um, <laughs> selling them as their own. I don't know if they bought the company or moulds or what, but there you go. So, there we go. It's a little bit odd to me that this is labelled as 1 to 76. I know why they do it, because they're Hornby. And Hornby obviously make double O Railway. And double O Railway is 1 to 76 scale. And HO is 1 to 87, I think. But it's clearly not right, is it? Because even if the vehicles, the, the, the trucks, were 1 to 76, which are, they, they might be, I don't know that they're not, there's no way the plane is. The plane's been around for the Spitfire's been around for years. Uh, it's I'm sure they haven't slightly reduced the size of this to make it one to seventy six. So that's really odd. It's a bit of a shame, really, that they that they feel the need to say it's seventy six. Just scanning around my room, it looks like the. The emergency sets listed as 76 as well. I really don't know which is right. I suspect it probably is 176 for the lorries and then 172 for a plane, but I mean it's close enough. If you want uh, to be exact, there's much more expensive kits out there. And this is a lot of kit for £20. And here we have the transfers. I don't know quite how well that's going to focus, but I can tell you that they are nice and crisp nothing wrong with that at all i don't know if they're cartograph ones but um i think they've certainly remade them and they're looking rather nice so there we are that's my opinion of the raf battle of britain airfield set i think it's uh well worth 20 pounds 22 pounds asking price you get a lot of kit in there. I mean, it might be a good kit for someone who's just starting out. Give them plenty to do, and you've got the, the paints and things in there. Or if, like me, 
you've been making pits for a long time and you you just fancy a few something a little bit different I may, I may end up scrapping the airfield but the trucks are nice and I believe they're about 12 11 or 12 pound just for the trucks so with the, the crew and plane even if you discount the diorama section it's a it's a good buy so <laughs> in conclusion yes I think it's worth 21 pound 22 pound uh, I don't do as many kit reviews as I used to on this channel, but that is changing. I'm I'm moving more into the the board game and card game end of things, but the the modelling side is definitely going to keep going. So, if you want to see more of uh, kits and models and diecast as well, actually, uh, subscribe. So, as usual, subscribe and like if you like, and goodbye for now.